Hello, so for this lab you're going to do several things. So the first thing is you'll design a truss. So this is the truss that I designed. And then you'll also build a truss and then you'll simulate the truss. And each group member will do this separately. And then you'll combine your ideas to see which one uh, you feel like is the best solution for this lab. So to start out with, you notice that I've got a sheet of grid paper here. You also really need to use a sheet of grid paper, but make it be an actual sheet of paper. If you don't have a, a grid, uh, if you have engineering paper, you can flip it over on the back and there'll be a grid on the back. Uh, you can use graph paper if, if you have graph paper from a math class. Um, or you might have a, a composition notebook that might have a grid like this. Uh, but if you don't have anything else, you can get by just with a, a regular ruled paper. The only problem with the ruled paper is you'll have to measure where the vertical lines should go and kind of add them your, yourself. But decide a scale and then go ahead and draw out your truss with fairly thick lines on your physical sheet of, of paper. Uh, so pretend this is a physical sheet of paper. So with my truss, I have four feet uh, from A up to E. That's the, the vertical, not the uh, hypotenuse distance. So four feet up. And if you count the number of squares, you'll see that I've got eight squares going up. Over here, for my three feet, if you count, you'll see that it's six. So I've selected a scale of um, two blocks on the grid are equal to one foot of actual measurement. Then once you get your truss drawn out, take whatever it is that you're going to construct the truss out of. So little uh, toothpicks are great. If that's all you've got, it's going to be a really small truss, but that's okay. Uh, straws work really well, but make sure that you cut off the bendy part if you have a straw with the bendy part. Um, the craft sticks work really well or coffee stir sticks work really well if you have just absolutely nothing else you have no straws or no little piece of wooden things you can also just take some pieces of paper try to roll them up very consistently but just roll up some pieces of paper just extremely tightly around a pencil just try and get them as tight as you can around the pencil pull the pencil out, tape the or glue the uh, rolls closed, and you can use those hollow paper rolls as, as members when you, when you uh, construct your truss. And then when you're ready, uh, make for sure that you're recording a video, and then just go ahead and very carefully break the truss. So you'll have to have it on sit on a table over here, and then you'll have to have it sit on a table or a book or something over here. Try to get it level. Uh, and then pull down on this pin here, wherever it is that you're going to load it. Make for sure that you've got it marked on your diagram. Um, or if, if you can, you can get a, a string or something and tie some weights and pull down. Make for sure that you do not overbuild these trusses. You would be very surprised at what a truss made out of straws or toothpicks can build. So if you get really carried away and you're using a whole bunch of craft sticks and laminating them together, you won't be able to safely break the truss at the end. So if you make one like that, don't even try. Try to make something that's out of fairly thin, um, fairly flexible, fairly quote unquote weak material so that you can, that you can break it. And then as you're building it, just tape the pieces directly onto your piece of paper. And that makes it super easy to fit and glue when they're all taped to your paper. And that way you can also get your truss as flat as possible if your truss is a little bit off. Um, so again, try with whatever you have on hand. Uh, and then make sure that you make that video of you breaking it safely. Again, if you overbuild it, don't try to break it. If you can't break it safely, don't do it. Just make a video and say, hey, I overbuilt it. Sorry, I, I can't break it safely. And that's perfectly okay. Then once you get your truss built, we're going to go over here to this truss simulator. 
So the link uh, is in the lab report and I'll also put it in the video here. We just need to build the same truss. So we're going to start off with uh, adding a node. I'm going to put B right here at the origin. Now I want A over here. So I'm doing three feet. So I'm going to come over here three feet. Notice that I've got the mouse location there. Let me zoom out just a little bit. So I'm just looking at the mouse location. Coming out here to negative three, so that'll give me three feet, so there's A. Now I want to place a pin E, so I need to go up four. So I'm going to go down here again, zoom out just a little bit more. And let's see if that would give me enough where I can, nope, not quite enough. Okay, let's see if I've got enough. Getting close, but not quite. Okay, there we go. So I'm looking at it. I've got zero and four is what I'm looking for. And there we go, zero and four. So I'm going to add a node there. Now I need to add a C. So C is going to be three over. So I'm looking at the mouse location over three, three, and zero. Um, and then I need this one to be over up four and over three. So I need to come down slightly. There, we got it. And then now I just need to add this last node. It's going to be three and three, so it would be six over from node zero. So five and six. Okay, so I've got all my nodes. Now I need to go back and add members. So to add my members, I just click the two members. I uh, sorry, click the two nodes to add the member. So I've got those, and I need this diagonal, and I need this one, and this one on top. So it's just click, click. All righty, and now I need to add some supports. So we're going over here, we've got a pin on one side, and you would use yours the same way. Put a pin on one side and put a roller on the other. So we'll click on pinned, and we'll click on number one. That's the symbol that this simulation is using for pinned. And we'll click on horizontal roller, and we'll click on number five. So we've got our pin and our roller. We've got everything except for the force. So now let's go ahead and put that force on there. So we'll click on three and just draw it down. All right, there we go. Let me go back to full screen on this one. And then the only other thing that we need to do is just see what our solution is. So we'll click once, and then there's our solution. There's our force, and that was a little bit uh, larger than the force that I wanted. I've, I wanted a 100. I can go down here and change this though. I need to scale back by a factor of five. So if I change this to 20, that should give me the force that I need. Let's take a look back. be faster for me just to change it here. There we go. Alright, so there's my final truss all simulated 
And then to finish this off, just make sure that you get a screen capture of this. You can see that I went through one thing where I, I was mistakenly changing the force scaling down here instead of just changing it here. Uh, and then when I did that, one thing that was good was it showed me uh, basically that the, the forces were so large it kind of made the diagram unreadable. Um, so if you see something like that, uh, you can still get the forces down here. They're all still here. So make for sure that when you do your screen capture, just zoom out and get the screen capture of both the, the truss here and the data down here. It's the same, it's just it may be easier to read down here. And looking at, at these data, you can see that when there's a force that's in compression, it's going to be a red and it'll have a negative number. And then when there's a force that's in tension, it's going to be blue and it has a positive number. So this makes sense. When we pull down on three, we're trying to extend all of these nodes, one, zero, three, and five, and make them be a little bit further apart from each other. So we're trying to extend them relative to each other. So that means those forces are going to be in tension. Also, we're trying to make three move away from four and two, so those are going to become in tension. And then the top functions uh, basically then in compression to prevent that movement. So you can see how the members are working in tension and compression. Uh, sometimes when students first see trusses, you see that 100, and then you kind of expect to see the 100s. Uh, but due to the trigonometry and the way the calculations work out, you're usually not going to exactly see that unless you had a situation like at this pen where you had a 100 going down and the only member that could support it would be this guy over here, in which case it would be a 100. But just be aware of that, that it's a little more complicated and you may want to watch the calculations video. So thanks for watching.